Okay. Hello, everybody. Hope we all here. Thank you for joining us today for another WebEx Developer Public Webinar. It's part of our monthly series. Um, my name is Phil Vellante. I'm from the WebEx Developer Evangelism team. I'm going to be the de facto host today. Um, I think we have a very good topic for our session today, so hope everybody's ready. Um, this is going to be uh, WebEx Contact Center Flow Designer for Developers. Uh, this can be presented by Contact Center Product Manager Aruna Bhattacharya. Um, we're really proud to have Aruna bring his expertise to today's webinar. Um, but uh, also joining uh, the session is uh, Robert Tarr and Alan Johnson from our awesome App Hub partner, Journey. Um, they're going to talk about and demo their uh, Journey customer authentication app. Um, and they built that leveraging the WebEx Contact Center Flow Designer. So a uh, perfect partner to bring on for today's session. Um, and just as a reminder, we're going to be using uh, Slido for all of the Q&A in today's webinar. Um, so you should see that popped up right inside the app. Um, and if, you know, if it's easier to just join from your phone, you can just go ahead and scan that uh, uh, QR code. And you can go ahead and uh, drop your questions in there. And uh, one of us will be able to answer that for you. Yeah. Um, but you know, before we get into the main presentation, I just want to take a, a few minutes to go over some of the latest news for uh, for WebEx developers. Um, and, and everything that I'm going to mention here is going to be uh, found uh, right on our developer portal on the blog site. So developer.webex.com slash blogs. Um, so you can read all about these these items. But uh, let's start with the, the first one here. Uh, exploring a WebEx Calling Reports and Analytics APIs. Um, I authored this particular blog. So, um, so I give a little um, in-depth overview of the reports and analytics APIs for WebEx Calling. Um, I go ahead and cover uh, what templates are available to generate for WebEx Calling Reports uh, with the APIs. And also uh, using the Call uh, Detail History API. Uh, that's for generating custom call records really fast. Uh, so I go through all that in there, uh, so be sure to check that out. Uh, and then the second one is uh, working with the SDKs on the updated WebEx Meeting Suite platform. Uh, so this is really important. Uh, there's been a lot of great uh, updates over on the new platform, uh, but there are some changes that uh, you know SD app, uh, legacy SDK applications may have to make. Um, software and developer support engineer Rafael Lagana um, he put out a great article that goes through all the steps that are required to migrate your current WebEx SDK workflow to the new WebEx Meeting Suite platform and all the advantages that come along with it. So uh, that's a very informative article, too. Um, but uh, the third one here, um, we're really pleased to announce the WebEx Web Meetings SDK uh, version 3. Uh, so uh, uh, Cassava from our WebEx Developer Platform web team you know, he takes us uh, through the launch, tells us about all the cool features that's included with this latest version. Um, so we'll be sure to check out that announcement blog. And then uh, the fourth item we have here, uh, we recently updated our iOS SDK Kitchen Sync demo app. Um, it's now, uh, you know, in includes Swift UI. Uh, so we're kind of bringing this into like a, you know, more of a modern version here. Um, so, uh, WebEx software engineer, uh, Akshay Agarwal, um, so he kind of unveils the responsive new interface inside of that kitchen sink app. Uh, again, it's now powered by Swift UI. It sports a really nice refreshed modular design. Uh, it includes all the latest industry standards that, uh, you know, mobile developers have come to expect. So be sure to check that out. And last, but certainly not least, um, Aruna actually uh, wrote a nice companion blog for this webinar, um, and uh, you know it's going to cover a lot of what it's going to be presented today. You know, for using WebEx Context Center Flow Designer to build personalized customer experiences. Uh, so before I steal any more thunder away from that topic, I'm going to go ahead and throw it right over to Aruna. Um, and go ahead and uh, get us introduced to this topic and uh, kick us off. So Aruna, take it away. Thanks, Phil. That was great. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Arunab from the project management team here at Cisco. I currently lead our flow designer platform. Uh, that's part of our WebEx contact center offering. Now, for those of you who are wondering what is WebEx contact center, what's flow designer, what does it bring to the table? I'd like to start off with a very interesting situation that happened last week that uh, totally transformed the way that I think about customer experience in general and the power of data driven orchestration. Now, 
this sticky situation was of course my washing machine malfunction right i basically went through a situation where uh, the entire flooring was flood flooded there was damaged flooring right as well as of course now i have to go ahead and fix this uh, washing machine of mine but uh, the first realization that i had was the number of parties that are involved to just service me as a customer so you had one business doing emergency restoration they had to dry the floor another one that had to come and actually do the flooring replacement right there's another business and of course there's a technician who, who's going to come and actually fix my washing machine now the the next realization was okay how am i going to afford all of this of course insurance to the rescue right so the first thing that I did was uh, find out that, okay, the insurance provider is actually going to be the one who's going to orchestrate this complex task of getting this uh, figured out, right? And uh, how much could they cover for damages, et cetera? So the first thing I did as a customer, right, I called into the contact center. I have a sense of urgency. I want to actually talk to someone and deal with this problem. So I was actually stunned when I was greeted by this, uh, you know, uh, intelligent virtual agent. It was actually a claim assessment bot that sounded almost human like right it was it was totally personalized it knew who i was why i was calling cuz actually i was browsing the website as well it knew exactly what questions to ask me it assessed uh, my situation up front it actually collected all of this context it took pictures of the damage data about my account and then sent me an email with all of the details and most importantly uh, it did this with you know some sort of back end orchestration so it did some data collection data lookups i'm sure they had some pretty slick app integrations in there. And that's what we're going to talk about. And most importantly, it knew that I needed to talk to someone. So it understood my urgency and actually knew that I needed a claim specialist. Like this is not a issue that can be resolved, you know, just via chat, right? So first thing it did was it maintained this context. It got me an insurance agent that actually pretty much had all of that context, right? The agent had everything that they lead, needed and literally took care of everything. Like all I heard from the agent was I'll take care of everything, knew why I called, what I needed, had all of that contextual relevance from what I uh, did in self-service. And obviously, you know, I gave a 10 on 10 on the survey and you can clearly see that as a customer, I made a lasting relationship with this business, right? You can see that I'm promoting this insurance business and telling you the story about uh, what a perfect CX is. Now, I wanna actually underscore the fact that this perfect customer experience is what we call differentiated CX, right? It's not your commoditized, you know, just go in there, press some menu options, et cetera. It's about understanding how your customer deals with the business and then totally personalizing that customer journey across all of their touch points in the business. So this is what we call effective CX or orchestration and automation. So here in my case, I called in, you can see that there was some sort of flow that was built, right? And finally, when an employee had to deal with uh, all my asks, all of that data and context was passed in. So this is what we uh, actually term as key pillars for differentiated CX. So let's take a quick look at those key pillars. Data is what brings it all together. You need a platform to actually maintain that context and stitch together all of this stuff that's happening, right? And of course, there's no one size fits all. Like I was uh, specifically a special case. I needed some sort of personalization for my situation, but all of the technological relevance and evolution that's happening now with, with AI, uh, all of that was brought into the mix, right? So that is what we call as this magical layer, right? We call this magic as a automation and orchestration platform. So for those of you wondering, what is WebEx Contact Center? It is our CX offering. What is Flow Designer? It is a next generation orchestration and automation platform. It kind of brings in personalization through all of these technological toggles that we have with text-to-speech, custom data through data integrations, contextual intelligence through virtual agents, app integrations and orchestration. So today's agenda is gonna be just looking at all of this, uh, these toggles available within Flow Designer, and then we'll also look at a example integration with how you know our partners, especially Journey here, who was our S Plus partner, Solutions Plus, how they built actually an app integration into Flow and solved a customer problem, right? And we cover some use cases. We'll take a quick look at the sneak peek and how we're evolving this platform. But in a nutshell, the Flow Designer is a canvas, right? It's a visual drag and drop developer interface. People say no code, low code. Well, I beg to differ that no code, low code is, is cool, but you also need some sort of developer orchestration to make it even more personalized. So we're going to provide you a palette of activities that you see on the left side. You can actually drag and drop those activities. Uh, those are all built-in functions, right? We have given uh, simplicity of built-in functions, like you can play a prompt, do some condition checks, do some case statements, and then you can actually connect all of those to orchestrate a specific you know, customer experience. We give you data constructs. So what you see on the right side is like a palette of variables which 
provides you a data construct of how to actually define that business data. So you have to define your local variables. We also have variables that you can use for reporting. We'll cover all of that. And of course, logical constructs, right? The conditions, case, loops, and all of that. Now, uh, the flow designer that you saw over here, right, uh, when I called in, uh, which is what we call as a channel mapping. So everything that you do on a flow, you build this beautiful flow, but then you have to actually map it to a specific channel. In this case, it's a 1-800 number, and then you actually then connect all of your apps via certain interfaces inside Flow Designer. So we have the HTTPS activity, which is your HTTP client, which can actually bring in this power of connected data and apps. You can bring that data in, and then using text-to-speech, you can inject that data using variables and then personalize your text-to-speech. So you can pretty much build conversational intelligence using text-to-speech, and we look at all the developer uh, specific you know uh, a toolkit that we have for TTS uh, and finally when you actually want to connect a virtual agent do you want to bring the virtual agent in front do you want to bring the VA behind do you want to bring a virtual agent to do certain side of uh, side of automation which may be in the call maybe uh, you know pre-call so where do you want to bring that virtual agent that is also pretty key in flow so it's it's okay to just design a virtual agent and connect it to a channel but that would just be a self-service virtual agent what if you want to bring the virtual agent after actually doing some sort of self-service. So you can bring the VA behind using Flow. And of course, we spoke about business relevant data for context, that's important, as well as targeting agents using that context. So this is what we call intelligent routing. Like, can I get to my same insurance agent? Can I do some sort of sticky routing or targeted last agent routing to maintain that continuity? Like if I spoke to my insurance agent, I want the same person to actually answer that call. Right, so uh, the other part of Flow Design is actually surfacing relevant apps. So Flow Designer integrates with the desktop inside Webex Contact Center, where you can bring in that data that you actually collected in, inside of Flow, inside of virtual agents, and then surface it to uh, the live agent. So without further ado, I just want to go ahead and show you what it looks like and how you would launch Flow Designer. So Webex Contact Center, admin.webex.com is your single landing page for Webex Contact Center. You'll see a Contact Center ribbon in there. And here is where you could launch flow directly through the contact center overview page by clicking on create a new flow, right? So what that's gonna do is basically launch the flow designer palette. Uh, this is the demo for the webinar, right? So we're gonna go ahead and build a new flow. And what you'll immediately notice is a whole lot of tabs as well as uh, options here. So uh, most simplest form of flow would be you'd like to play a message and probably do a menu like so, right? And uh, probably do some condition checks and you know, and queue the call, right? So you have queue contact, you have menu, all of these different steps. Now, this uh, palette of, of activities, they do support both static prompts, as you can see, as well as you have text-to-speech, right? And this is where our platform is now bringing in the power of more than one connector. So you can see that Cisco Cloud text-to-speech is something that's gonna be available pretty soon. This is early access. So I'm kind of showing you what that would look like. And you could actually add a TTS message right here and say, you know, uh, welcome to contact center, for example, right? And this text-to-speech message, you could definitely inject custom data in there. And this custom data would correspond to uh, variables that you would create inside Flow. So that is where our canvas here, you could see Flow variables, where you have specific data types that you can add, and you can then access those data types in each and every one of those activities. So uh, we have flow variables that can be locally defined in a specific flow. And we also have global variables that you can define on a organization level and have different flows leveraging that global variable. The other cool part about global variables is the fact that they can be reported on and uh, we'll see a quick demo about that. But every one of these little activities, you could call it like a sub function. So it has an input, it has an output, and then it of course has activity output variables. Like you could see the menu step, you want to know which option was entered by the menu. You could actually capture that inside of the activity output variables, and then you could post it to an external system. Now that brings us to interfaces, right? So we spoke about one interface in all of these media activities, which is play message, collect digits, you know, all of these activities that play media. There is an interface in the form of TTS as well as data, you know, injection within TTS, where you could actually put in the custom variables. The next interface uh, is actually the HTTP request interface. So this is pretty important in the in the sense that you, this is where you would actually bring in any of your connectors that you define, right, on an org level, or you could even uh, you know put in a request URL that is local to this flow. 
And the way that, uh, you know, our integrations are structured today is on WebEx contact center, you could go to integrations and then you have all of your connectors here. So all of your text to speech, including that, the, the, the software with Google, as well as Cisco, as well as your custom connectors to external apps. Like this is what I would say is, is one of the key uh, interfaces to, uh, you know, ex existing apps. So uh, let's say you have a custom application and you have an API and you want to actually get some information from that. You would actually define that here and then you would define, uh, you know, a flow that actually uses that. So let's take a quick look at uh, what that flow would look like in terms of uh, leveraging these interfaces, right? So here, what you see is uh, a, a main inbound flow that's actually leveraging the HTTP request activity to look up a customer, right? So uh, here we're looking at a custom application that was defined on WebEx Control Hub. And right from the root URI, you can actually put your request path, supports the exact same thing that you used to maybe in another client like Postman, et cetera. And of course, uh, you can also pass the response using JSON path. We'll talk about all of these different, uh, you know, uh, uh, interfaces as well as the toolkit uh, once we look at the demo, right? So in this demo, I'm basically defining some custom variables here. You can see that there's a customer name that we're basically defining, and we're gonna go ahead and fetch that customer name using an HTTP lookup from a CRM. So it could be any other external system, grabbing that name, also checking whether they're a VIP or not, playing a message, and then of course queuing it to a specific agent that probably this customer is, uh, you know, has a specific agent or preferred agent, and we are using the agent email uh, variable to actually queue the call to that agent, right? Uh, this is to actually deliver that call to the agent. So suppose you want to actually do things before you deliver a call, during your, uh, the call delivery, as well as after, we have some concept called event flows. So these event flows uh, basically expose all kinds of events that happen in the call. So you can see all of these green um, toggles here, which is when an agent is offered a call, meaning when it's actually ringing on the desktop, or the agent answers the call, or the agent disconnects the call, or maybe the caller drops. This is where you can actually orchestrate certain custom actions. So the most common action when an agent answers the call is to provide them context, as well as provide you know uh, an external system some some sort of context. So we have uh, what we call screen pop activity inside of Flow Designer, which can pop open a custom page. So here you can see that we actually have, uh, let's say a, a YouTube video, for example, it's embedded inside the agent desktop and we wanna start it at a specific point. We wanna auto play on, we want to mute it uh, when we start entry and then we also passing the customer name into the video. And then we're also orchestrating maybe another pop. Maybe you have a CRM. Uh, the CRM has a specific contact ID that you actually did with the lookup, right, uh, initially. And you wanna pass that uh, CRM uh, screen pop into the agent desktop. And then finally, we also have ability or use cases where you could have a screen pop where you want to actually pre-film a, a form based on certain key value parameters. So all of this would be basically bundled into query parameters and passed into the screen pop. And this is the power of the custom data. As you can see, it's a mix of uh, user-defined variables, like customer name is a user-defined variable, as well as uh, activity event output variable. So this is agent answer dot q name for example is being collected uh, as and when this event happens you know what's the queue that actually uh, got answered and for that queue i want a specific you know a custom uh, screen pop or a custom app right so we'll take a quick look at uh, how this comes together so let me go ahead and uh, uh, let me go ahead and log into the agent desktop here real quick so you can see the agent is logged in and just want to show you what that looks like contact center. I don't know if you could hear that. And the agent actually renewal risk, cancellation risk, all of these variables uh, pop up in the agent desktop, right? So what you can see here is uh, the debug mode inside Flow Designer that actually provides you a way to look at what's happening within the agent desktop and within the actual call that's being offered. So here you can see that uh, this debug inside of Flow actually transferred the call. It looked up the customer information, right? It uh, got the customer name. It got that the VIP customer was true, and it also collected the customer ID. It then played a message based on the actual customer name. You can see that it injected that, uh, you know, uh, personalized greeting, and then it queued the call to the agent. So you could see that uh, this uh, 
uh, call was actually queued to the agent. And when the agent actually got the call, you can see that the event flow ran on the call, right? So all of this uh, is actually possible within the WebEx contact center flow designer. Now, the other thing that we have done with uh, contact center flow designer is the fact that uh, not only can you see live debugs of what's going on, right? In this case, uh, the call was offered, but it went into the uh, a different path where it says uh, end the flow, right? Uh, immediately after you have actually offered the call. That's because we are actually saying that, okay, we're gonna go ahead and say that we don't want logging and you don't want any screen pop for this flow, right? So let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at that and go straight into the test call. And let's correct that. So we're saying that, okay, 100% of the calls are gonna go to uh, no logs. We're gonna correct that. So let's look at edit. And then let's uh, actually put 100% of the calls into uh, offering the HTTP request as well as offering the screen pop, right? So let's do that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and hit validation. And this validation is gonna show you that the flow doesn't have any errors right now. So go ahead, go ahead hit publish. And what you can see here is uh, it also shows you which version you can actually map to the entry point. So uh, in this case, uh, you know, the flow is actually a live flow. And these are the tags that you can actually assign. So suppose you want to make changes to the flow and you want to introduce something else inside the flow. So in this flow, I had just a lookup and then a play message. Maybe I want to just insert a, a virtual agent to that flow. So I can go ahead and uh, create a new flow, publish a new tag to that flow, right? And uh, make changes to that flow uh, based on the tagging mechanism. So this will allow you to essentially test different flows, uh, like your test flows, your live flows. So here I'm making a change to the flow, made a, a test flow, and then now offered that same test flow inside of the inbound channel, right? Uh, where it was pointing to the live flow, you can just swap it to the test flow. So this kind of uh, flow versioning allows you to actually, uh, you know, test your changes as well as make changes into the uh, flow designer uh, in a very uh, you know uh, deterministic manner, right? So you don't have to actually make changes to your live production flow, and you can always revert back. So this is where you can see that uh, you have previous versions of the flow. You can see what versions, what were the changes. Uh, suppose I made a difference when I was uh, you know just developing the flow. You can take a look at that, and then you can replace the current version with this version. And your latest version is is what is always going to be the uh, the the most recent one. And if you want to actually uh, point anything to latest, that's also allowed in terms of version la labels, right? So that's a quick look at the flow versioning. Now, uh, what also happens with a very large inbound flow is the fact that things can get complex, right? Uh, you can see that there are a lot of different uh, actions happening here, but what we've done is we've actually released a new feature called subflows. So when you're actually in the flow designer canvas, you'll see a new tab called subflows. You can launch it from here, create a new subflow, or you could also go to your uh, you know, flows list screen and then launch a subflow from here. So taking a look at uh, all of the complexity that's going on inside of the main flow, maybe you wanna just package all of the in input collection into a subflow, and maybe you wanna just you know, do your business art checks into a subflow. So looking at what a subflow contains, a subflow is essentially another version of the flow with a lighter weight palette, which only allows you to uh, build modular action. So you can see that Subflows have much lesser number of steps here, right? And allows you to package and prepackage all of that information into a specific, uh, you know, uh, subflow, which would enter into the subflow with uh, from the main flow. You could pass in variables into the subflow and then change those uh, variables and then pass it back to the main flow uh, when invoking the subflow. So every subflow could be invoked very easily into a main flow. And the only thing that you need uh, to do is map your actual input and output variables inside of uh, the subflow. So you can see that this subflow is a packaged function. It has a contract, like what's the welcome prompt, what's the open prompt, what's the close prompt. You can pass in those variables into the subflow and then exit out of the subflow by passing out any of the su subflow output variables, if there are any. So quick example of what that would look like. If you look at uh, you know uh, an example uh, main flow with, with subflows in it, 
you can see that uh, the flow pretty much becomes uh, very easy to to navigate. So you have business art check that's all happening within the main flow, and then all of your queue treatment complexity is now encapsulated within this subflow that's called queue treatment. So if you're wondering what that queue treatment subflow is all about, you can just go ahead and look at that queue treatment subflow, right? And uh, it's basically just playing music, playing a message, and also doing a uh, specific check. Now, if you want to have some sort of callback treatment inside the main flow, you could do that as well, and then package all of that into a subflow. So essentially, uh, subflows, uh, you know, allow you to break down the complexity of your main flow, and then prepackage it and ensure that uh, you know the uh, complexity of your main flow is easy, right? So with that, I'd actually like to go ahead and look at some use cases with what has been built inside Flow Designer. So if you look at all the apps that have been integrated with Flow Designer, we have a whole lot of apps like uh, customer journey authentication built by Journey. We have a bunch of other apps that are voice filters, as well as outbound campaign managers that have been built using Flow. We also have a patient uh, assist app, which uh, SpinSci has built that actually leverages, uh, you know, call data within Flow Designer and then integrates uh, all of the, you know, existing healthcare uh, uh, EHRs and EMR systems, right? And uh, the most uh, important uh, use case today with uh, contact center security is, uh, you know, authenticating customers as well as ensuring that, uh, you know, customers are properly authenticated inside of the IVR. So uh, the journey team uh, that's with us today has actually built the Journey Customer Authentication app, and I'd like to pass it on to Robert to you know speak uh, more about uh, the Journey integration. Over to you, Rob. Thanks, Arnab. So, if if you take a look at uh, your traditional contact center flows today, you know we we have agent assisted, we have automated flows today. One of the places that you typically fall out of self service in going, let, let's use the example of calling your bank. You are going to, you know, maybe you want to find out the locations of ATMs or hours of operations. You, you can give that kind of uh, level of service right up front. But the moment that you do something like ordering a new card or trying to change a, an address on your account, you end up getting into an identification and verification kind of loggerhead. So typically, you fall out of self-service and go to an agent so they can ask you questions, things like that to make sure that you are authorized on the account and have permission to make those changes and then go ahead and complete those actions. So using the subflows, what we're gonna show you here today in real time is the ability to, to add the, the smartphone into the interaction using the biometric sensors you would use to unlock your, your banking app, for example. So you can do all of these great things on your, on your banking app using the pass key on the, the phone to identify yourself. Let's go ahead and do the same thing in a voice call. So we can, we can gather the biometric assertion that you are the, the correct person using a subflow, add it quickly to an existing self-service flow, and you know, you're, you're off to the races. So if, uh, Alan, if you're ready, I'm gonna hand it to you, sir, and you can actually show how we can add a subflow to an existing uh, self-service flow today. Sounds good. Thanks, Robert. Uh, so what we're looking at right now on the screen is we're gonna actually perform a, a call and that call is going to authenticate a user, a uh, customer, with our device biometrics. And this is going to be easily performed. Uh, this can be accomplished in many different ways, right? But, but we've taken a very, what would be a very typically complex um, situation, scenario, um, and made it into a subflow. And I love these subflows because they're, Creation, you can create and subcategorize the information. They're easy to, to drop into your, your, uh, you know, your frame and then go ahead and um, let's close that. Um, and then, you know, author them and edit them, just wire them up. So they're really easy to, to, to drop in. They become a really good uh, deployment method for our customers. So instead of having to give a customer like an example, get started flow, which is very complex in the first place, you can just hand them off a subflow. Now these subflows can be done, you know, obviously in the main flow and dropped in. Uh, we also incorporate them in our event flows. And so you can see in this case, we're gonna also, as part of this process, we're gonna call in, we're gonna authenticate, and then we're gonna pop up a journey iframe, which is going to have a lot of different types of orchestration actions. And again, in terms of authenticating these, you can easily um, 
you know, drop them in and they're as simple as wiring them up. In this case, we're just wiring up some, some input var variables and then we're gonna get some output. Um, in this case, a token. Uh, so there's you know, very specific things that can be done. So that's really, really nice. They act from a development perspective, much like a function. You drop them in, you wire them up, you, you give up their inputs, they send out their output, and then you can continue on. So they're really nice and they're really reusable. So for example, we have three subflows here. This one subflow, which is our, our pipeline subflow, send pipeline one as an example. We'll see if I can move that right here. Hold on a second. I've got to move my screen because I got something in the way. But our um, subflow pipeline here, this single pipeline allows us to send out any number of self-service uh, orchestration actions by just simply changing the input variables. So it acts very much like a function. So it's a really nice uh, simplicity, complexity, uh, uh, you know, makes the complex simple. And it allows us to perform these, these actions and these activities with easy deployment and a single subflow can support multiple things. So we really, I, I love these things. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and perform the demonstration. What you're gonna see here, I'm gonna call in, we're gonna authenticate using my device biometrics, using this basically this main flow here, this very simple main flow, which in this particular case, close this here. In this particular case, just brings in the, the client, we're gonna authenticate them. This is our authentication enrollment, and then we're gonna transfer it to them to the agent, and then we're gonna pop the iframe. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and call in. Hopefully you'll be able to hear this. Request to your mobile device. Okay, so our authentication request is coming in. As an SMS, I'm gonna do my device face biometrics. So authenticated me. Go ahead and mute. Please enter your password. Then transform. Now I'll go over here, obviously, to the call that's coming in. I'll show my screen pop. All right, so I can see in this particular case that I have pre-authenticated that customer coming in, and that agent can know that without ever sharing any PII information, things like that. We actually authenticated with the device. And you can see here in this particular case, excuse me, that that person authenticated a minute ago. Now I have a number of different actions over here that I can perform, and these are all customized and low code method uh, development, but I can perform additional activities and actions, which are very simple. Um, to, to, to send out. And again, that send pipeline subflow can also send out any one of these through a customer self-service situation. So um, this is powerfully allowing the, the agent to be able to do customer self-service when it's necessary in a very easy manner and very easy to deploy, but also can also do things like, for example, I'm just gonna, let's say I'll, send a payment request as an example. And so in this particular case, we'll just call it subscription. Okay. And we'll just say it's uh, $59 and 99 cents. And I'll send a request. Now you can see in here as an agent, I'm seeing live payment request here. And on the phone that I have right here. We'll go back and we get the new another SMS. Tells me what agent I'm talking to. It loads up my transaction here. I'm going to go ahead and hit manual entry, which I can't do there. I got to do it on my phone. So I'll go ahead and say, give it some information. Just some default information, default expiration, CVS, postal code, continue, submit payment. And you can see as I'm performing this activity, 
it's also completing the action here. No PII information has ever been shared. We just made a successful secure payment and we did a successful uh, device authentication. So this wraps our demo. Back to you, Aru. Thanks a lot, uh, Alan, that was awesome. <laughs> so uh, let's take a quick look at what uh, Alan actually showed us, right? Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab back. Take a quick look at uh, uh, how that was deconstructed, like uh, what Alan actually showed us, right? So in the developer toolkit that we have uh, inside of, of Flow Designer, uh, you can see that we have a bunch of HTTP clients, right? Media activities, virtual agents, and screen pop, as well as queues, uh, activities where you can actually inject all of that logic. And with that, we have data definitions, which we call local variables and global variables. And I'm going to show you the the aspects of uh, you know local and global variables that actually help you report of of uh, what's happening within the flow. Uh, with that, we have activity output variables that uh, actually help you capture what's happening within the activity, as well as event output variables and uh, cat data. Now, along with that, we also have a entire toolkit where you can build expressions. Uh, what you saw with Alan's demo was a lot of data management as well as data parsing that happened within the uh, expression builder and uh, we use uh, a template called pebble expressions we're going to talk about that as well as uh, parsing data from a uh, backend system uh, with uh, what we call as json path right so we're going to take a look at uh, each one of these uh, different aspects of uh, working with data and what you saw uh, all of that gets supplemented with uh, what we call subflows today where you could have a very large use case and you could chunk that out into a bunch of subflows that actually help you, uh, you know, uh, manage that use case. So, uh, taking a look at uh, what we just saw with the flow, uh, if you look at, you know, let's let's take a look at this main inbound flow and what's happening uh, within the debug screen, right? So, if you click on debug, you'll be able to see the interaction as well as what's happening within the interaction. So, let's take a quick look at what's going on here. Uh, as you can see, the the agent is now taking the call, uh, as well as uh, there is some data that came into the agent desktop, right? So uh, all of this data that you see inside of the agent desktop, this is what we're talking about as being uh, local flow variables, and they could be a combination of the uh, local variables and global variables. Any of this data that you see that can be modified by the agent, uh, these are called editable uh, variables. So the agent is able to edit the renewal risk, also able to you know uh, maybe make changes uh, as well as you know uh, make changes to the renewal status. Uh, all of this is called agent editable variables and all the variables that are passed in from flow essentially into the agent desktop, these can be potentially reportable as well. And you could take all of these variables and then push it into the screen pop, that, that's what you saw. Uh, now, if you look at the screen pop that we had uh, you know, orchestrated before, we had a bunch of screen pops. We had like three different apps that we are actually you know, screen popping. So looking at the screen pop for the video, we have like a video that has query parameters that we're actually passing in the customer name dynamically. And you also have a CRM where you're passing in the ticket ID and the customer ID and the customer information of that ticket, which is the contact and the record, as well as you have a third screen pop, which uh, aims to autofill a form using the data within Flow Designer. So this is the power of uh, the event flows that I wanted to showcase. And all of this you can see is happening in real time, right? So this customer name and this queue and all of that is actually passed into the form. Like if you look at the request form by itself uh, and maybe you know just copy the link address and you could take a look at it in a new browser tab. You can see that it's passing in all of this information from uh, the flow designer. So this is what you see as data passing from flow, right into the screen pop, as you can see from uh, all of this configuration here. Uh, the second aspect of this is the fact that you know um, an agent could potentially uh, you know, make changes to this data with editable, uh, reportable variables, right? So on Flow Designer, uh, we have a concept called uh, you know, uh, global variables, which is essentially uh, variables that you can define that you wanna use for reporting. So they have a different icon. You can see renewal status, cancellation risk, a VIP customer, all of these are reportable uh, global variables. So you can see that they're also agent editable, which means that if you actually pass this data into the agent desktop, uh, an agent could make changes to that, and uh, you would actually see that reflect inside of reporting. So 
we can take a quick look at what that would look like and how those variables show up, right? So if you look at this uh, simple report here and you run that report, you can see that, uh, you know, uh, uh, all of this, uh, these variables like renewal status, cancellation, risk, et cetera, they could be potentially uh, reported on just using drag and drop. So if you actually edit and create a custom report here, all of those variables that are global could be defined and then could be reported on. So that's how you actually get all of your business data merged in with your contact center uh, you know, fields, right? So this is an important concept as well, which we call global variables. Now, uh, finally, I wanted to also uh, dig a little deeper into our toolkit that uh, you see on the right, right? We have the expression builder, uh, where you have Pebble expressions as well as JSON path and SSML or speech synthesis. So all of these uh, different uh, you know, aspects of our toolkit essentially allow you to personalize your uh, design inside of Flow Designer. So let's take a look at first uh, what the expression builder is all about, right? So we have something called the uh, expression builder, which shows up, which you saw whenever I hit uh, a double curly brace, it opens up an expression builder. Or the, or what this means is that you could inject custom data from Flow into that. And then you can also use a whole lot of pre-built functions and methods. This is just a quick reference of the cheat sheet, but uh, essentially doing a lot of uh, parsing of this data. Now, the good news is that we are enhancing this in the future. We're also bringing ability to you know, uh, uh, execute custom code to these Pebble expressions. And that's what you will see in our roadmap in the next six months, where you'll be able to actually use you know, something like JavaScript in addition to Pebble to actually do uh, data manipulation, right? So once you've manipulated that data, now you want to uh, you know, inject that data into any of these media blocks. Let's say there's a play message activity or a collect digit activity, et cetera. So this is what we call speech synthesis markup, where you could use SSML to personalize the intonation of what your agent uh, you know, and your virtual agent, as well as your speech conversational IVR is actually saying. So SSML is supported inside of your VA, as well as it's supported in all of your media activities that you have today. And just a quick reference and a quick, uh, you know, uh, uh, just a quick sneak peek of what you can do in terms of uh, personalizing that audio, uh, modifying intonation, as well as, of course, uh, depending on how you want to say that info, if it's an account number or if it's a currency, et cetera. Uh, that's how you would do it conversationally and use SSML, right? Uh, the other aspect of, uh, you know, the interfaces is uh, the power of JSON inside of, uh, flow designer so we provide you a json object in terms of uh, variables that you could build so you could not just have string text integer etc but you could have json as an object what that allows you to do is essentially handle complex json data, uh, data structures natively right so you would use something called json path to pass it out with the dollar symbol uh, it's a simple syntax there are a whole lot of different cheat sheets out there for json path but essentially if you have a specific json uh, file you want to get a specific field. You could use JSON path to extract that. You could even use complex rules within that, as you can see on the right side, where you have a count equals to this and a pin value more than this. So you could put conditions in there to get records from within that JSON using a specific conditional syntax as well. So this is just a quick, uh, you know, uh, sneak peek of of all the toolkit that we have. Of course, you saw the flow be debugging as well that was already in there where we had uh, a snafu in the demo, and then you saw that uh, that was due to a misconfiguration inside one of the event flows, right? So you just saw that live as well. So that is basically uh, what we have with flow debugging as well. Now, along with this entire toolkit, we also have uh, the ability for you to repeat all of these actions within subflows that you saw uh, already. But subflow debugging is pretty similar to flow debugging, as well as the fact that uh, subflow updates are also going to be, uh, you know, uh, automatic updates. Meaning you can make uh, updates to your subflows, and then you can cascade all of those uh, subflow updates to all of the parent flows that are using that uh, that subflow, right? So that's another important uh, uh, aspect of uh, of subflows, right? And the the other aspect of uh, subflows is the fact that you can create a subflow uh, directly from Control Hub, but you can't associate a channel to a subflow. A subflow is just meant to be part of a main flow that you see there. So most of the common actions like menu, business hours, collecting, callback digits, queue, treatment, error handling, for example, you can see like uh, there's a global error handler, which is 
a common error handler across all of my uh, different flows. I'm using a subflow for that as well, right? Uh, so we're going to post samples of all the subflows out there for you all to use. And you could actually take a look at uh, all of those samples and then let us know if you have any feedback, right? So this is uh, a quick sneak peek about the platform itself. Now let's get into some couple of uh, use cases that that show you the power of uh, you know uh, WebEx uh, and uh, the WebEx platform that you already know of, maybe it's a meeting or it's messaging, and how do you integrate that with uh, WebEx Contact Center? So a couple of use cases here that you see here, which uh, this is one use case where you could definitely integrate Flow Designer with an existing application uh, like WebEx app, right? So you could definitely build some sort of conditions inside of the Flow. Let's say if hypothetically you have a space that's created with supervisors and agents inside of the WebEx app, you could definitely alert that space if there's a high value caller that is just actually missed, you know, um, uh, getting uh, connected to an agent, for example. So this is one example of how you could use conditional base alerts, use a different API like WebEx, just that single HTTP client inside of Flow Designer and, uh, and then integrate different applications, right, uh, inside of uh, Flow. And then uh, we also have a whole lot of different, uh, you know, event flows that we're adding every day uh, or every month, we actually discuss what are the different event handlers that developers want. So one of the use case was, once I make a callback, can I actually retry one of those callbacks, right? So we have a new event handler in uh, in the flow, where, which allows you to actually retry callbacks in case the callback was not uh, being able to make uh, the callback, right? So there are like 10 retries across 14 days. You could couple that with the wait activity. So you could actually wait for a specific uh, time duration. So you could wait for like 10, uh, 10 seconds to up to like 72 hours. So that's pretty much uh, what you can do with the, uh, you know, with the callback retry, right? And uh, the other thing that we added with Flow Designer for a use case was record uttering, uh, record utterance. So we have a new uh, record node inside of Flow Designer, which allows uh, you to capture caller audio. So pretty much play a message and a tone and have the caller enter that audio. So if you have an app that does support voice biometric, for example, all you need is the record activity, capture that audio, and then post that audio to an external system, like an HTTP request uh, with a new content type. So we've basically added file support with our HTTP request, uh, as well as we, we allow you to actually post that content out to an external system. Now, we are also enhancing this HTTP request to allow you to play audio while that upload is happening because there is a 2 MB max file size for that audio, right? So you could uh, potentially post that audio and also play some audio to the caller to prevent dead air, right? So that's one another use case that you could do with uh, WebEx uh, Contact Center Flow Designer uh, with coupling the record and the HTTP request. And then uh, finally, you could do a whole lot of other things like Suppose you want to do sticky agent routing, right? So this is one use case where you kind of uh, know which agent you want to route it to, as you saw in the demo as well. Uh, and the agent gets that call using route by agent ID. Now you could have a backend intelligence platform that understands how and which agent to route to and what would lead to the best business outcome. So you could definitely use our own repair reporting APIs, use our search API, for example, uh, get the last agent that was routed to the call and then route the call to the same agent. That's one of the examples. And then use uh, HTTP request coupled with Q2 agent to target it via the agent email ID. So that's one use case of how you could ensure routing the call to the same agent to maintain business continuity, right? And the last thing that uh, I'd like to share as a, you know, as an example would be uh, A-B testing as well as blue-green deploy. So you saw uh, you know, uh, Alan and uh, and team actually build subflows. So what they could do is maybe experiment with a new authentication mechanism for 20% of the callers, right? So there's a new percentage distribution node. Essentially, it allows you to do a weighted round robin distribution of call paths, and it's going to basically uh, ensure that the percentage that you've allocated in any call path finally eventually gets to that uh, percentage or allocation, but it, it's going to do it in a round robin manner. And it's going to use weights. So suppose you had, uh, you know, fifty percent, thirty percent, twenty percent. You would first be uh, given everyone would get twenty percent, and then the fifty percent call path would then uh, start getting more and more calls. So it's kind of weighted in its algorithm. And what you could do is you could also do it in the beginning of the flow, 
but you could also do it uh, like you saw in the screen pop. Maybe you want to offer agents a new app or new version of the app during the screen pop. For example, in the customer journey authentication, you want to introduce payments just for 20% of the agents. You could do uh, pretty much A-B testing using percentage distribution uh, using those call paths. So that's uh, pretty much what we have uh, on the truck for Flow Designer. And I wanted to give you a kind of a sneak peek of, of what's coming, right? Uh, and what we're bringing into the platform. So uh, this is going to happen pretty much in the next uh, six months. But uh, second half of 2024 is what I would uh, recommend as being you know, a, a timeline for all of these. The first one and the most popular one would be invoking WebEx Contact Center APIs from within Flow Designer natively. So you will have the ability to integrate WebSCC APIs from Flow for custom or orchestration where we'll build a native HTTP connector, which you can just drag and drop inside Flow Designer, and then call any of the WebXCC APIs that you've seen on Dev Portal uh, from within Flow Designer. So it's gonna be just a plug and play connector. All you need to do is specify what API you want, and then uh, you know uh, go ahead and call that. Uh, the next one is a flow import and export APIs. So here you can uh, uh, programmatically import and export flows. So you don't actually need to go and get into Control Hub to upload a, a bunch of flows that you have in a specific org. So let's say Alan and team have built the subflows, right? Uh, they have everything working in there. They want a customer to actually experience that. They could uh, definitely programmatically do that uh, using APIs, using the uh, import subflow as well as import flow APIs that's uh, coming pretty soon. So uh, if you want to clone flows across orgs, uh, this is going to be one of the key asks that's going to come uh, pretty soon. Uh, the next one is a flow templates. We are going to provide you a pre-built bunch of Cisco flows out of box. So this is a feature that is going to give you the skeleton of all of these things that we're showing you pre-packaged inside of a organization where you don't have to really um, you know, design it from scratch. So Alan has a subflow for journey authentication. That's going to be potentially available as templates. So first we are bringing in Cisco templates, and then we're going to allow uh, you know developers to also uh, submit these templates with uh, pre-built uh, you know import external templates as as well. So first you're going to see a bunch of you know 10, 15 starter flows that we built out of box, and then you would have the ability to basically templatize and share those templates uh, within Orgs. And uh, finally, you saw. In the demo, uh, the SMS fulfillment, as well as a couple of things that were going on. Now, the first question that I've been asked is, when can we uh, get native digital channels within uh, the Flow Designer, right? So that is pretty much on the roadmap. It's coming soon. So we'll have digital messaging first, where you could send messages, which is uh, send an SMS or an email from voice flows, right? That's the uh, first step. So you'll have two new activities where you can send an SMS or you can send an email out. And this would leverage WebEx Connect where you would define all of your assets on WebEx Connect and then literally just drag and drop that activity in Flow Designer and then put the content in, content of your SMS or content of the email. Now, uh, after you do that, you'd want to know how many SMSs were sent out, right? How many emails were sent out? So we're bringing in Flow Analytics. This is also a feature that's already in development. It'll show you all of the traffic that your flows are going through. So let's say how many customers actually authenticated successfully through the journey authentication. You could get a snapshot view in uh, the uh, you know in a visual manner, right? On how much traffic is flowing through that authentication subflow, for example. So that's going to provide administrators and supervisors ability to visualize flow traffic, and then you could review the traffic and then review the historical snapshot as well. Uh, it's going to allow you to look back three months, but uh, up to thirty days for drill down as to what happened during that call, right? So all of that uh, with flow analytics coming very soon, and finally. Uh, what you may have uh, also noticed uh, on the flows that we had, we had a kind of a native Cisco virtual agent that is also coming pretty soon, along with Cisco uh, native text to speech. All that is in uh, early access, so go ahead and uh, request our team for for access if you really want to participate in this beta. But voice virtual agents is now going to be powered by WebEx Connect Pod Builder, and it's going to be uh, allowing you to build and bring in virtual agents natively inside of Flow Designer. And uh, finally. Uh, this is what uh, we wanted to mention was if there is a specific activity, right, that's taking a very long time. So we've seen uploading files to external systems, or maybe today you're using LLMs. You know that it takes about 10 to 15 seconds to get a response. So what happens then? Do you give the caller dead air or do you actually play back something to the caller? So this is what we call an activity wait setting for HTTP, 
where when we're actually making an external uh, data dip, we can place some audio while the while we fetch that information. So all of this is uh, is coming into uh, in, into Flow Designer pretty soon. I would say uh, in the next six months, you will hear um, announcements on all these features, right? So what next? Like, what's the call to action? You saw a whole lot of things happening. You saw a, a, a demo of how to use data within Flow Designer, and you saw a, a demo of the screen pops, et cetera. Now, you can try all of this out, everything that you saw using our developer sandbox. So we have a sandbox that's available. Just go into developer.webxcx.com slash sandbox, where you can just click and request for a sandbox. You get a live working number, and you get default flows as well, at least the, the basic flow, which plays a message, et cetera. Then you can learn to build an experiment and demo. So that brings you to like the next stage. What would you do to actually learn? So we have flow designer documentation that's uh, out of box in the administrative guides. That's very detailed text driven documents, but we're also supplementing this with uh, a flow designer lab documentation. So this has been built by our customer success and solution assurance teams. They were, they're continuously building content on how to actually, uh, you know, leverage flow designer and all of the different uh, capabilities in there. So step-by-step -step lab guides available for you. As well as, you know, if you want sample flows on HTTP and the custom connector, et cetera, uh, there is uh, a bunch of uh, sample HTTP flows uh, to all the popular uh, CRMs, including Salesforce, ServiceNow, Zendesk, Microsoft Dynamics, which has a README, a vidcast on how, how to actually build it, and then also has the sample flow. You can just download that off of GitHub, import it into your, uh, uh, into your org. And of course, if you want to know how to uh, interact with that API, there's a sample Postman collection as well, right? So I would definitely urge the teams to go and experiment. And, and with that, uh, uh, back over to you, Phil, for any uh, questions and you know any comments on on what uh, the team saw. Okay, great. Thank you, Runab. It was great content. It was really, really good stuff. Um, and again, uh, you know, there's a companion blog about a lot of the stuff that he covered too. So go over and check that out. It was just published today. Um, I know we're at time right now. Uh, I just want to spend just a couple more minutes just to, just to go over some of the questions that came in. Um, if you have to drop off now, uh, that's quite all right. Uh, we actually will have the recording available within a, a couple of days or a few days. Uh, over on our developer portal. Um, there's a, a webinars page right on there that you can access the recording from. Uh, but uh, the first ones that I want to address are ones that uh, haven't been answered yet. Um, so um, Jennifer Broderick had a, a couple uh, good questions here. Uh, and the first one is regarding the event agent answered. Um, and, you know, can you provide an audio tone or play a WAV file for agents not at their desktop? You know the tone that would indicate a customer variable setting. Yeah. So uh, one follow up question would be: Would that be an agent whisper greeting? If yes, uh, then that is a feature that's on our roadmap. In the sense, the ability to pay, play audio either to the customer, which we call a compliance greeting, where the customer hears that audio before being connected to the agent, or an agent whisper greeting, which is basically the agent hearing audio before they are connected to the customer. So both of those. Uh, aspects are on the roadmap, but it's not available today. The agent answered event today is only for asynchronous non-media, uh, you know, uh, activities at this time, but both roadmap. Yep. Okay, great. Um, okay, it looks like that was the only unanswered one. So let's go through a couple of the ones to, just for everybody's benefit here. Um, I think we, when you went through the roadmap, um, Jennifer asked, uh, when will subloads be GA? And he said, that's probably going to be within a week or so. Um, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, we're planning on next week. Uh, that's being optimistic, of course, uh, with all the, uh, you know, testing, et cetera. But uh, definitely within the first week of May, uh, confidently, uh, it should be uh, GA, right? So uh, we'll okay. definitely, yeah, very, very close to GA. Great. And um, another question that came in was, can subflows be reused across multiple main flows? Um, the answer that we got was, uh, yes, it can be yes. used across multiple main flows. I would, I would argue that's a very strong business case for subflows is the reusability of that same modular component and that same skeleton across multiple subflows. So you would create one skeleton of the subflow and then inject intelligence using variables into that subflow. So reuse that same subflow, but you could also pretty much change the flavor of that subflow when you're using it within different main flows, right? So it's it's like a skeleton where you give life to it using variables from the main flow, 
That's how I would define it. Yeah. Yep. Right. Um, and then we had a question that came in uh, during um, the demo for uh, for Journey's application, um, and David was asking, uh, did that require the caller to have a specific app installed? I mean, Alan, if you want to address that question. Sure. No, it do it doesn't. Um, uh, no app. No app needed. Um, that's not to say that you couldn't have an app if you wanted to. Uh, as far as the what you saw on the demo, it was delivered by SMS, um, but. When you're sending these pipelines out, you can you can do them by SMS, by email, by WhatsApp. You can deliver them directly to a URL with a, a URL uh, code. So they can be delivered in multiple ways, and they can be consumed in multiple ways. And by the way, uh, everything that you saw is iOS and Android. Right. And browser. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Um, and uh, the last one here uh, from Samesh. Uh, will we support any developing languages to write some script or complex expression other than the Pebble templates? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. And that's the reason I didn't use no code, low code. We are bringing in the uh, ability to actually write code uh, into Flow Designer. It's still on the roadmap. And our plan is to actually include that in the second half of 2024. Uh, but that's that's the best uh, estimate I can give you. But yes, expressions. Uh, JavaScript is the first one that uh, we were looking at. We also evaluating Python, et cetera, but uh, you can just reach out to me if you had any preference to which language, uh, essentially encapsulating a lot of that logic in one activity and then reusing it. Um, that is coming So yeah. Right, okay. Well, I think that, uh, I think that answers all the questions that came in. Um, if you do have any questions that come up later on, you can always feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we're always happy to, to address any questions that come afterwards. Uh, but with that, again, thank you very much for joining this session today. I hope it was informative. Um, we do these every month, so be sure to uh, you know, stay in tune to our webinars page on our developer portal, developer.webex.com slash webinars. Uh, and then you can watch the recordings and register for any of the, uh, the next sessions that are upcoming. Uh, but with that, uh, again, thank you for joining and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.